Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today we're going to be painting this super adorable snowman and I'm going to be sipping a little Pinot Noir. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for the materials today, I'm going to be using a 18 by 24 stretched and primed canvas. You can switch up the size, um, but that's the size I'm going to be using and you can get this at any of your local craft stores or you can get it online. I'm going to be using three brushes. I'm going to be using a number 12 flat synthetic brush. I'm going to be using a number 12 round synthetic brush and a number 4 round synthetic brush. Of course, you can switch those up if you want as well. Um, for paint, I'm using acrylic paint. The colors I'm using are titanium white, Mars black, burnt umber, this is a chrome orange, fire red, cobalt blue, and green oxide. And you'll notice I have two areas of white. I have a bigger section and a smaller section. The bigger section, we're actually going to be using that to make a gray color later. So you're going to want to put two sections of white on your palette. And of course you can switch up the colors, but that's what I'm going to be using. You're also going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I am going to also upload a picture of the final painting. Um, and you can find it in the description below. You can print that out, use it as a reference as you go along if you'd like to, and that's all we're going to need. Alright, so for the first step what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pre-mixing what I like to refer to as a warm gray. So I'm going to take this larger area of white and I'm going to add some brown to it, just a little scoop of brown and a little scoop of black, and the brown is going to bring this into a warmer kind of gray. I'm going for like a medium tone. That to me is a little bit too light, so I'm going to add more of both colors into it. So some more brown and a little bit of black. It's always easier to just keep adding those um, darker colors as opposed to adding too much and then having to bring back some white and kind of waste the white. Um, this gray will turn darker as it dries so just know that you want it to be kind of like a medium gray with a little brown undertone um, and you can certainly modify it as you want and what we're going to do with that gray is we are going to be making the outline of our snowman with this media this uh, number 12 round brush so I've got my gray, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first do the center ball of the snowman. And for me, this is going to start about halfway up the canvas. And I want it to be um, almost like halfway between the bottom and here. And I'm just really going to make myself a pretty good sized circle. And that's going to be modified as this progress progresses, so don't worry if it's not perfect. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the bottom ball. It's going to be a little bit wider and I want it to kind of have a flat side. I'm going to start about midway up the sides of this um, this snowball and then I kind of get it a little bit flatter at the bottom. Something like that. And again you're going to modify it as you go along and now I need to do my head. So I'm going to start this. Um, I don't want it as wide as the second ball so I'm going to start it right about here and here and something along that. And you can overlap if that makes it easier for, for you to, um, to see the circle. And that's all we're gonna do for the first step. So the next step, we're gonna use the bigger brush. So when you're ready, put this in your water cup, take out your big flat brush, and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for the next step, I'm using my big flat brush. I'm using that pre-mixed warm gray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the entire exterior of my canvas. You don't need to do any particular brush strokes. I'm just going to be going left to right. As I get around my snowman, you may find that I'm going to, um, you know, just go around the snowman. But know that you don't really need any special brush stroke because 
when you use these lighter colors, they really cover your canvas well. So the stroke is not really gonna matter if you have a nice solid color. It will um, dry in a nice solid fashion. Plus, we're gonna be putting snow on the canvas later. So if you do have any spots that didn't get covered as well as you want them to, you'll be able to strategically place any snow on that canvas and that will give it um, a nice finished look. And you can see every now and then, whoops, there goes my easel. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that my canvas is in my camera right now and I'm gonna make any adjustments. I don't know how that happened, that was a little odd. Is, are we doing all right? All right, we're doing all right. So I'm just gonna keep painting that, that was a little interesting that's never happened before i think i had it tipped too far forward but if you guys can still see it then we're good to go um, and again i'm just kind of finishing painting this background with my gray you can see i'm i'm not painting too too fast i do want to get a nice even coverage and some people like to do a second coat um, but i'm right now i'm just going around my snowman outline my snowman will probably end up being a little bit bigger than it is right now because when i go to do um, the colors in the snowman. I'll probably bulk it out a little bit, but this way at least I have a nice um, outline for it that makes it so I can um, have some kind of guideline as I go into the the process in a few minutes of making the color in the snowman. So I'm just kind of finishing up here and some of you may want to paint the edges or the sides of your canvas. Um, sometimes you'll notice as I go along in this process, you'll catch me kind of reaching over on the edges because I like mine painted. Um, because we are using a nice solid color for this first coat, I can always go back later too and just kind of tidy up those edges before I, um, you know, before I call it done. But right now I'm just kind of painting all around my snowman and finishing up here. We are going to use um, this larger brush for the next step. So once you get this all colored in, you're gonna wanna wash and dry this big brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting in the snowman with the base color. So I'm gonna be using three colors. I'm gonna be using white, brown, and blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the white and I'm going to be dotting the entire snowman with kind of heavy white. Um, this way, when I go to do um, the other colors, which are the blue and the brown, this white is gonna be nice and fluffy and it's still gonna be wet because I'm using a good amount here. So, and this is where if you wanted to, you could um, kind of manipulate the exterior shape of the snowman. Um, but you can see I'm just kind of dotting it. You could use a bristle brush for this particular step. Um, I'm just choosing to use this one because this is the brush I wanted to use for the background, but you could certainly switch it up. Um, you do want to keep your edges kind of messy. Um, if they're really clean looking, it's gonna um, not really look exactly like a realistic kind of snowman. A realistic kind of snowman is gonna have bumps and stuff around the edges. Um, so now that I've got the initial shape in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up more white and a touch of brown and a touch of blue. And when I mean just a touch, I mean just a touch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm using this as like a, a shadow along the edges. I'm gonna put a little bit down below and I'm just kind of lightly dotting it right now. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit in through here. I'm picking up just a touch more brown. And now that I've kind of got these little um, almost series of dots, what I'm gonna do is start to blend it just a little bit going into the snowman itself. So it's still kind of wet. So I can take this brush and just kind of lightly dot. I don't want it to look exactly like 
I think I have a fly in my hair. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a strange episode. Uh, so I'm just kind of dotting along the edges. So this way it gives it a, a hue or kind of a shadowed little area around the edges. Um, you could make it lighter, you could make it darker, what is, whatever is visually appealing to you is going to work. Um, I'm going to bring this one in a little bit more. Maybe I'm going to pick up a little bit more white. I think I'm going to use a touch more brown too. I like mine to look up more on the natural side. And to me, when you're building a snowman, you're probably going to have some dirt in there because you're working outside. So you can make it as you know, warm as you want with just a little bit more brown. I mean, you don't necessarily want it to look dirty, but at just adding these little bits of um, shadows along the exterior of the snowballs, so to speak, um, really helps to make it look nice and natural. And I'm just kind of putting my head back. This is going to be a nice, healthy looking snowman. Um, so. Don't be terribly concerned about the head area because you're gonna have a big huge hat on there. You're gonna be disguising it with um, a whole lot of other elements. So I wouldn't be terribly concerned about that, but I'm just kind of darkening this up just a little bit on the edges because I wanted to have um, a little bit more of that shadowed look. So I added a little bit more brown. And then once you feel like you've, you've accomplished this, we are going to be switching brushes to um, that medium round brush. So I think I have the number um, 12 round brush. So when you get this all done, you can put this large brush away in your water cup and take out your round brush. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing for the next step with my number 12 round brush is I'm going to create the first layer of my hat. So I'm going to use just black paint and I'm going to take my brush. I like to take my brush and spin it on the side of my palette because that gives me a nice pointy tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dot at the left corner of his neck and the right corner of his neck and then I'm going to connect those two dots. So I'm in essence just drawing an outline around his head. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those two reference points on the neck and the neck and I'm going to make myself in essence kind of like a halo. So I'm going to do something along this line. I'm going to bring it right back to this point and this point. And then I'm going to color that part in with just black paint. So I'm using that same brush. I'm just gonna color it in. And when I get this section done on the hat, then I'm gonna make the top section. So I like to use a lot of paint on my brush when I'm using black, um, simply because it allows me to get a nice um, smooth stroke to it. Um, you might want to add a little bit of water to it. Sometimes when you're doing smaller lines, that helps out. Um, but I just use more and that helps me to get the nice smooth lines. And now what I'm going to do, I want to add the top of, to the hat, but I don't want it as wide as these exterior pieces. So I'm going to make myself a couple of markers, maybe one right about there and maybe one right about here. And for me, I want kind of a big hat. Um, it's going to be kind of wider at the top and more narrow here and it's going to have a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm starting over here. I'm going to bring it kind of like this, like this, and maybe around like this and something like that. You're going to find that your your hat may look way different than mine. You could do a nice square top hat. You could do Whoa, this is I think I've got a little malfunction on my easel today. All right. Hold on. Hold the hold the phone. Let me just make sure it's still looking all right in the camera. Are we good? We're good. All right. I, I, I think we're going to have to, for next video, do a different um, easel or something. This is becoming quite the challenge. Um, all right. So I've got this area that I'm just continuing to um, fill in with black paint. And again, you could modify the shape of it. You could make it bigger. You could make it 
um, squarer or rounder or shorter, um, really whatever you um, want to do for the shape is fine by me. This section where the brim is going to be will pop out later when we put snow on it. So I'm just about finished with this step. Um, I will be using uh, the same brush, which is going to be the round brush for the next step. So when you get done filling in that hat, you don't even have to wash this brush because we're going to be using black paint. You can just sit, relax, and perhaps take a sip and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step, we're still using this number 12 round brush. We're going to be creating our arms slash branches. So I'm going to be using black paint. The trick here is you kind of really want it to look like a branch. So as you're, um, what I do is I'm going to start, you know, where it kind of like in the middle of this uh, midsection. And as I go out, I want my branches to get skinnier and skinnier. So what I do is I'm going to start and I'm going to kind of mark myself a little bit of a wide area, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch through there. And then that's where my branch is going to come out. And as it comes out, it's going to get skinnier and skinnier as the end of it, as I get towards the end of it. And I'm going to have a couple of branches coming out of one arm because what's going to happen is I'm going to have a birdhouse hanging from one of these. So my trick to getting these little branches at the ends is as I am using a lot of paint for one, that's that's like trick number one. Um, you saw this one, I started at the top and as I went towards the interior, I was pushing harder. So that's one way. Another way is if you're starting in the interior and as you want to go towards the exterior, you, you lift off on your pressure and that's going to allow you to have a nice skinny branch. So I'm doing these with just black paint for now. And what I'll end up doing is I'm going to end up, um, when I put snow later, I will put some snow on the branches also. You could do that in this step right now, but I like to kind of wait until that black dries. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, so that's going to be that branch. Now I'm going to work on this one over here. And this one maybe I'm going to make a little bit different looking So because there are no two branches alike in this world. But again, I'm starting pretty wide as it's coming out of the body. And then as I um, am making my way towards the end, that's when I'm going to let off on my pressure and make it on the skinnier side. Um, all the while, I know that on this side, I'm going to be having a bird on one of these branches. So I want to make sure I have some place for that bird to sit. So just know that that's kind of your end goal for this particular side. And then that's going to conclude that step. Um, and we are going to be using our big brush for the next step. So after you get your branches done, I give them also a little bit of wiggle so they're not terribly straight um, as you go about it. Um, but. Those are just my little tricks. So when you're done with this, put this uh, medium brush away in your water cup. You can take out the big brush, wash it and dry it, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are gonna be doing the shadow underneath our snowman. I am using my um, large flat brush. I will be using black and my original gray. So when you do this, you're going to be using just a tiny bit of black and you can wipe it off on the side of your palette. What I'm going to do is I'm essentially kind of underlining my snowman with like a rubbing kind of technique. It does not have to be a perfect line. I want it to be kind of uneven. I do want to go a little bit up on the side so that indicates that you can see the, the depth or the roundness of the snowman as if it's casting a shadow on both sides. Um, once you get that outline underneath there, I'm not going to wash my brush, I'm just picking up a touch of my original gray and I'm in essence kind of blending the black into my gray ground. So this is going to give you a nice transition 
you may want a little more black you might want a little bit more brown whatever you know visually works for you and if you do it and you're like ugh, this is too much don't worry because we're gonna have snow on the ground later this really is just we need something to tell the viewer that our snowman is not floating in the air so this is helping to accomplish that that goal this is making it so it does have that grounding effect we know that it's sitting on on the on the ground um, and there is some kind of light from the sky that's casting this shadow underneath it so when you're all done with this we will be using that medium um, round brush the number 12 round brush so you can put the large brush away in your water cup take out the medium one and get ready for the next step All right, so what I'm gonna do with my medium brush is I'm making the first layer of my pine trees that are off in the distance. So I'm gonna be using green and black paint on my brush at the same time. I don't pre-mix it. I want these to look like they're far off in the distance, so I'm gonna go about halfway up this bottom um, section of the snowman. And these are meant to look like pine trees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one line for the trunk something like that. And if I want another one, I can make another one of a shorter height. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from the top and I'm gonna do kind of a down and out motion with my brush. And I want those, the branches to be longer or wider as they come down towards the bottom. So here we go. I'm just kind of moving my brush in a down and out fashion. I don't really want any of that trunk to show. You might want to, but I don't. Um, so I just kind of do it until that trunk is covered. We're going to be putting snow on them later. This is just to give the effect that they are in the shape of a pine tree. I just picked up a little bit too much green, so I'm picking up a little bit more black. And if you can, you can have them light or dark, whatever again is visually appealing to you but your goal is to kind of get them into a kind of a triangle type shape um, and a not super clean triangle shape um, the messier it is the more natural it's going to look so I think that's good for me I'm making this one a little bit longer so it looks like it's a little bit more in front and we are going to be using our small brush for the next step so when you get this all set you can put the medium brush away in the water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so for the next step we're using this small round brush I'm going to be making my bird the colors I'm going to be using are red, brown, black, and white. And what I'm going to be doing, I want my bird to be like just a little kind of dark red chickadee. So I'm mixing a little bit of brown and red. And I'm going to be making um, two kind of circles. For me, the, um, the primary shapes for a bird for the body is an egg. So I'm going to make myself some kind of egg, color it in. And then I'm going to make a circle for the head that kind of overlaps my egg a little bit. And then I'm going to make myself a little tiny beak in whatever direction you want. And then I'm going to make myself a tail coming out behind the branch so it looks like it's on the other side of the branch. So that's going to be my shape. Now in order to make it look a little bit natural, I need a shadow and a highlight. So I did not wash my brush. I'm going to put a touch of black and a touch of brown on my brush and I'm going to do a shadow which is going to be underneath um, each section. So I've got a little bit of shadow underneath my tail at the bottom of my egg shape which is the body and maybe a little bit at that neck portion. That's going to um, give the viewer the information that it's round um, and it's got some little shadowy areas. I'm also, since I've got the dark color on my brush, I like to have a little tiny black or a darker beak. So I just added a little bit of black to the beak. And now I just wiped my brush off of my pants, but you could probably wipe yours off on your paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a touch of white 
and I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight to the head and the chest. I added white and now I'm adding a little bit of red to that white. And if that ends up being too light or too pink for you, you can certainly counteract the pink look with a touch of orange. The orange will counteract the, um, the pink. But that's all I'm going to do. You don't really need to go too in detail. You're going to have um, a whole bunch of snow on here later anyways. You just want to give the impression that you got a cute little birdie there. Um, so for the next step, we will be using that number four brush as well. So just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, I'm going to be making my birdhouse. So I'm using my small brush, the colors, are, which is the number four round. The colors I'm using are red, blue, black, and white. And I want to make my birdhouse like a kind of like a country or like a purpley kind of color. So I'm going to take a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and a touch of white. You can certainly just use purple, but I kind of like um, sometimes mixing colors like this because it allows my painting to have a cohesive look to it if you're using similar colors and just kind of mixing them into new colors because you are using that particular um, color palette they will it will have a nice cohesion to it um, just adding a touch more red here so it looks a little more purpley so for the shape of my birdhouse I'm going really simple I'm going to do um, kind of like the top I'm just putting it anywhere where I'm going to be able to put a string to hang it so it's going to be somewhere in this vicinity I'm going to put the top of a triangle and then I'm going to put two uh, vertical lines and a horizontal line. I'm going to color it in with my whatever desired color is. I've had people do blue houses, you can do a red house, you can do, you know, you can pick a color, um, whatever color you want. So I've got the shape in there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just give my brush a rinse. I'm going to pick up some black paint and I'm going to do a roof and when I do my roof I'm going to extend it further than the shape that I have um, created. So I'm just going to make that a little bit overhang just a little bit from the original shape. And then what I'm going to do is I've got to put somewhere so my bird can sit. So I put this little kind of balcony of sorts um, at the bottom here and then I need a hole in my birdhouse so if my bird wants to get some shelter you can go right into the house in the bird hole here and then I need a string to attach my birdhouse to the tree so you just want this to go straight up and you can make it look like it's a circle, like it's over, you know, it's kind of a ropey thing. And we'll add snow to it later. And that's all I'm gonna do for my bird house. I am gonna use this small brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be uh, adding rose, the rosy cheeks on. So what I'm going to do is I'm using my small brush. I'm using uh, red, just a tiny, tiny bit, and white. And I'm going to mix the two together. I'm making a very light pink. So you'll notice the red is probably going to be really, really dark on you. I have a touch of black still in my brush, but that's okay. So I just keep adding white until it's a really faint pink. You don't want it to be overpowering here. So once you get the desired pink, you're gonna pick a spot for your rosy cheeks. I want my snowman to be looking off in my direction over here. So I'm gonna pick an area, maybe I'm gonna have this one over here, and I'm really just kind of rubbing on an area for this pink. I want one on that side, and then I want one over on this side. And I actually think I want mine a smudge darker, so. Bear with me as I'm making it just a little bit darker. It's always easier to make it a little bit darker. 
So we've got one there, we've got one there, and then if you need to soften the edges to make them look like they're blended in with the face, just put a little bit of white paint on your brush and you can blend it right in around those edges so you don't have a hard edge to the to the um, rosiness because you want it to look like it's just natural and it's just you know maybe the brightest in the or the pinkest in the middle and then it just fades off into the face and then we are going to use this same brush for the next step so when you're all set with this step you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so for the next step, what I'm gonna do is I am putting my scarf into place. So I'm gonna to choose to use black, green, brown, and white. You could really make your scarf whatever colors you want. Um, I'm gonna start with the black, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in essence, make large polka dots um, in the area. So if I want my scarf to be here and maybe come down here, I'm making these kind of large, maybe oval kind of polka dots. Um, I wanna kind of forewarn you, if you make them really tiny and really um, in line with each other, it's gonna make it look like you're choking your snowman, <laughs> so you don't wanna do that. You want it to be big and fluffy, like it's a big, warm, knitted winter scarf. So make them nice and big. So here I go, I'm gonna start my first one, and I'm gonna make it maybe about almost an inch long, and I'm just gonna keep going along. You can see mine, I'm kind of curving, and I am strategically placing them. I can kind of see my original outline of the um, the snowman that we did with the gray color. So I'm really kind of just placing mine right along that line so it hides it a bit. Um, and then I know I want my scarf to kind of start coming down in this direction. So I'm gonna just make these, oops, I had a little green in there. Go maybe in through here. Maybe this one is gonna kind of flick off and go out that way and then maybe there's another piece of the scarf that's going to come down this way and you can get them to go bigger as they come down towards the bottom um, I know also there's going to be some fringe at the bottom so wherever you feel like the bottom is going to happen you can start a little bit of fringe there and again I'm just choosing to do um, these colors you can really have it whatever colors you want once you get the black dots Then you're going to switch your color. So for me, I'm going to go for like um, Kind of like an army green So I'm going to take this green oxide and I'm going to add some brown to it and that's going to make it like a Like an army kind of green which I like I like those more natural colors um, you could certainly add brown, you could add a little bit of black or white to it. That's going to make it put, put gray into it. So it's really kind of a, a visual preference on your part. And once you get that color, you could just use the green oxide if you wanted. But once you get that color, you're going to do the same thing. But this time it's going to be right next to them. So it's going to be the opposing section. So I'm just going to make... And again, I want it to look nice and fluffy. So this way, it's gonna touch the black, but it doesn't necessarily have to um, be in line with it. It can have like these little fluffy tops to it in through here, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna be putting snow on this too. So if you get to an area and you're like, hmm, that looks a little clunky, or I'm not really totally sold on that, don't worry, because you'll be able to um, strategically place your snow in a little while and that's going to help to make this really just all come together. Again, I'm just kind of putting these other ones in place here and then when it comes to the fringe, I'm going to add some green fringe in with my black fringe. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more here. And you can see I just went through a little bit of wet black it's all right, that one's got a little shadow on it. It's, you know, there's so much play here 
and margin for error, it's okay if this doesn't come out exactly as you had planned. Any little kind of flips or, you know, what you might think as mistakes really just can work themselves out with, um, with another layer of paint or some extra snow or any fun thing like that. So the next step after this will be done with this brush as well. So once you get your scarf in place, you can see how I'm continuing to make sure it's nice and fluffy and it's not gonna choke my snowman. Um, just wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm doing for the next step is the nose. So I'm gonna do this first because I'm gonna work my other features around the nose. I'm going to be using orange and white are gonna be my colors. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of orange and white on my brush at the same time. I know theoretically my nose should be between my two cheeks. You can have it as high or as low as you want. It can be as straight or as crooked as it wants. I'm gonna have my snowman looking this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide where I want that nose to be. I'm gonna make kind of like a, a backwards C in through here. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bring it out to the left hand side and make it nice and pointy. If you wanted to cross over your um, hat, that is a more difficult thing to do because the transition of it going over the hat from the light color to the dark color makes it difficult to cover. So know that if you do decide to do that, you may want to, or you may want to know that you're going to have to do a couple of coats to get it to cover, um, which is fine. You know, it just is going to take you a little bit longer. It gives it a really neat effect because you can, you know, see that nose kind of poking out and having fun as long as you want it to be. It can be super long or super short. Um, the easiest way to do it if you want it to go over is you could add some white to it, let it dry for a minute, and then, um, then you can cover it well. But what I'm gonna do is right now, I'm just adding a touch more white to my brush and I'm gonna put a highlight at the top of my nose. And that helps to cover that area as well. And we are going to use this small brush for the next step. So once you get that nose in place, you're gonna wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do next, I'm using my small round brush, the number four. I'm gonna finish the facial features. So I need some eyes, I need a shadow under my nose, and I need my mouth. So I'm gonna think of these as little pebbles that I'm putting on the face from the ground. So I'm gonna be using black paint only, and I'm using my small brush. And again, one of my tricks is I take my brush and I spin it on the side of my palette, and that's gonna make it nice and pointy and or you could add a little bit of water. So I am going to put, uh, he's just gonna have a couple of little tiny pebble eyes here. One there, maybe one there. I do wanna put a little shadow um, on the side of his nose as if, you know, when it's stuck in, it's got a nice little shadow back here. So I'm just putting that on the bottom right side of it. And then I'm gonna put um, pebbles as the um, as his mouth so I kind of want to go rosy spot to rosy spot and I'm just making them just like the eyes so I'm just kind of making these cute little dots making sure that it reaches cheek to cheek and again totally up to you you can do a full-on smile you could put you know, additional pieces if you want, but that's, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and we are gonna use this small brush for the next step. So once you get these facial features done, you, can, you don't even need to wash it because we're gonna be using the same colors. Just, you know, relax and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are adding the buttons to the snowman. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be, be using black paint. Um, you can also use your gray and or your white. 
Um, but I'm gonna start them with black. I'm gonna make four or five buttons. I'm gonna do them on the left-hand side. So again, it makes the snowman look like he's looking over here. I'm gonna start them smaller at the top and make them bigger as they go down. So I'm gonna make them circles. Um, so there's my first one. And as I come down, I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And maybe this is gonna be my biggest one down here. Once they're in place, you can add a little bit of gray if you want to, just add a little swirl in there. This is my gray from my background. Um, and if you wanted to, oops, that, one, that one's extra big. Uh, if you wanted to, you could take a touch of white and just add like there's a little kind of snow sitting at the top of them. And for the next step after this, we're going to still use this small brush, but I'd like you to wash it and dry it. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we're using our small brush. We're gonna be adding the snow to our birdhouse, our arms, and our scarf. So I'm gonna use my small brush to do that because I, I want it to kind of be a little bit more detail-oriented. Um, when doing this, I'm gonna be using a combination, mostly white, but I'll also use a little bit of that original gray. Sounds like a flies around. <laughs> There was a nice day today. It was like 60 degrees out, so the fly has come in the house. Um, so I'm going to be using the white paint for the snow on the scarf and on my birdhouse. And in the arms or branches, I'm going to be using a little bit of that gray and the white for the snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my gray. And I'm just kind of like streaking it in my branches. And this way the branches almost have a little bit more of... Um, so they're not flat. They've got a little bit of dimension to them. You could incorporate a little bit more black into it if you feel like, oh, I'm doing this and it's it's too, too bold. You can certainly just bring a little bit of black in there. Now that I've done that, I'm just gonna pick up some white and really what I try and do is just kind of loosely kind of uh, like streak or place this snow at the top side of these branches. And that way, it's as if it's just kind of sitting on them instead of um, instead of being falling in front of them. Um, and this gives it a natural place that it would have accumulated. And I'm going to do that on the top of my um, birdhouse as well. Once I get these ones done, I don't hold my brush tightly. I'm really just kind of I've got a good amount of paint on my brush, and I'm just kind of loosely letting it put itself in place on these branches. I, in, so this is a good thing and a bad thing, but right on this step, I don't have a sturdy hand. Um, so it benefits me when it comes to doing the snow because my hand kind of shakes as it goes. Um, but you can certainly do that in a manual fashion. Um, I definitely want some going down my on the top of my birdhouse, sitting right on the roof. Maybe it's sitting right on this little ledge. And again, I'm just using a little bit of white paint. I don't um, rub it in. I just kind of let it sit where it wants to. On the scarf, the scarf is gonna kind of be rounded. So it doesn't just have to be at the top of the scarf. It can also kind of be, kind of be down a little bit on the scarf. And I'm going to put some as if it's kind of sitting there. And I've got maybe a little pile up over here. And maybe on these little almost bumpy areas of the scarf. And again, you can use this snow to strategically sit in areas that you may not have thought were the best. So I've got some streaky areas that I kind of want to cover. So it's a great place to let some snow sit and then we're gonna after this step we're gonna switch to that medium um, brush that you have the medium round brush I think it's a number 12 and we're gonna use that brush to put snow elsewhere I guess you could kind of put snow nice and lightly on the top of your bird maybe it's sitting on the back of your bird all right, so after you've got the snow on all these areas, you can 
put this small brush away in your water cup and take out the uh, medium round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're using the medium, uh, the 12, the number 12 round brush. We're gonna put snow on your pine trees. I'm just gonna be using white paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same type of motion that I did for the first layer of the pine trees. I'm gonna do that left to right, but I don't wanna cover the pine trees all the way. And I also want little strokes in the middle of the pine tree as well. So here we go. I've got white paint on my brush. I'm just doing this kind of skirting down on the left to right, but now I've also got to do down that center. You don't want it to look like it's a 1972 feathered hair look to it. You want to make sure that you cover that center. So you don't want the center to be unpainted. So I just loaded up my brush for this one. And I, you can go down left to right, but then to close it off, you got to do some down that middle too. So I've got the left and the right, and now I'm doing a little bit down the middle. And that's going to conclude that step. That's a quick little step. Uh, for the next step, we're going to use your big flat brush. So once you get to snow on your pine trees, you can put this uh, medium round brush away in your water cup and get out your flat brush for the next step. All right, so here we go. We're gonna let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. So I'm using my big brush, my big flat brush. I'm gonna be using white paint. Um, I'm gonna be putting snow in various areas. So I need snow on the ground. I need snow on my hat. I need snow in my sky. And then if I need to, because I feel like I've got a couple of areas in the belly or the, air, the snowman itself, I might wanna clean up a little bit. I might wanna put more snow in there. So, this is going to be done with white paint unless you feel like you need to incorporate some of your original gray or anything like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm starting with my ground. I'm going to take some white paint and I need to provide myself almost like a horizon line. So I know that it has to be at the bottom of my trees and maybe in a similar spot over on the right side of the snowman. So I've got a good amount of white paint and what I'm doing is I'm almost just kind of um, like bumping it. So that way I've got some thickness at the top. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna do kind of the same thing. So I have an uneven line to it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lightly kind of take what's left on my brush and disperse it throughout the rest of the ground. So I don't really need to add any more to my brush. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna be very bright at the top and it's gonna end up a little bit darker down below. You can even put a little bit on top of some of that shadow. If you feel like some of that shadow was a little bit too dark, you can certainly use this snow to diffuse it a little bit or get it a little bit more in a, a, in a more natural tone. And right now I'm just almost like scrubbing the bottom of the painting. So what's gonna happen, because this paint is see-through and I'm just using, a, at this point, have just the remnants on my brush, what's happening is you're getting light spots and dark spots throughout the entire bottom of this canvas. And you can rework it until you feel like it's got the, the right look to it, but you can still identify the shadow underneath. You can um, still see that there's a horizon line. And now what I'm gonna do is I've gotta let it snow on my hat. So I'm gonna pick up another good amount of snow. My immediate spot that I wanna do is the rim and the top, because that's where the snow would be sitting the most or piling up the most. So I'm gonna figure out where I want that rim to be and clearly it should be like from here and you know over to here, that's gonna be the edge. And you, again, you can see that I'm kind of puffing it up in some areas so it's not just laying flat in a perfect line. And I'm gonna do the same at the top of the hat. So this is where my snow would sit and pile up for that matter. And then once I've got it you know, as much as I want in through there. And again, you can certainly play with this as much as you want. Now I've got to let it snow over the whole thing. But 
I think first I'm going to kind of work on this because letting it snow over the whole thing is kind of the, the final the final oomph to it. So I'm just going to kind of dab some white paint in these areas on the on the snowman that I think are a little bit too um, contrasting. I don't need much. I just want to kind of get rid of some of, oops, I had a little orange on my brush there. Make sure his he's got enough highlight in through here. Um, and then I'll let it snow everywhere. So this is just a touch of, of white on, my, on the corner of my brush. And this just helps to um, hide anything that, that might have been too, too bold for you. I guess I had a little orange on my brush too, no big deal. Adds to the, the colorful aspect of it. And now I'm gonna let it snow everywhere. So I, you don't necessarily have to reload your brush when you go to make it snow everywhere. Um, there's many different techniques that you can use with flicking um, a paintbrush or with using different sponges and stuff, but I'm, I'm just going to use this brush. I like to use like the corner of it and I'm just going to almost kind of dab it everywhere. The corner is going to give me more of like a little tiny dot. If I was to go full on, I'd have um, an unnatural kind of looking dot. It would be like a long, an elongated one. So I'm just kind of using the corner. It would snow in front of my snowman. So that's why you see me doing in front of the hat as well. Um, and you can have it snow as much as you want. There could be a blizzard going on. So if you feel like you need to reload your brush at any time, feel free to do so. I'm kind of reloading mine right now. Um, and you can have big snowflakes and little snowflakes. It's totally up to you. Um, there's lots of great other techniques that you can use. Again, like I said, like with flicking it, but I like my snow to just be kind of soft. Um, and I just find that if I can use one of these brushes and just keep dabbing the, um, the snowflakes on there, what happens is it kind of gives it this really full feel to it. Um, as opposed to making it look like they're stars, which sometimes I think when you do the flicking mes method, that's what it will resemble first is stars as opposed to snow. Um, but it's totally up to you. Um, this is in essence the final painting step of the painting, um, but we do have one more step to accomplish after you've gotten this done. We are gonna take out that small brush for the final step of any good painting. Um, but I'm just kind of, it's hard for me to stop it from snowing. It's a really fun step for me because I like to get the, um, the full aspect of it here. I want to just kind of soften this edge a little bit in through here. All right, he's super cute. I like my snowman. All right. Boy, it's hard to stop. Okay, I think I'm done. Do you think I'm done? I think I'm done. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm done. All right, so you can put away the big brush, take out your tiny brush for that last little step. All right, so the last good step to any painting is to sign it. So I'm gonna take my small brush, black paint. I sign my initials, bottom left, bottom right. You can sign whatever you want. And that's it. That's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting with you again sometime.